live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Think 2018. Brought to you by IBM. We're back at IBM Think 2018. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with my co-host, Peter Burris. Mo Abdullah is here. He's the Vice President of Cloud Garage and Solution Architecture, Hybrid Cloud for IBM. And Tim Davis is here, Data Analytics and Cloud Architecture Group and Services Center of Excellence, IBM. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Glad Thank to be here. Yes. Mo. Garage, cloud garage, I'm, I'm picturing drills and wrenches, and what's the story, what's garage? Wait, I wish it was bring that, that home of a garage, <laughs> my bill would go down, <laughs> for sure. Uh, no, the garage is playing on the theme of the startup. The idea of how do you bring new ideas and innovate on them, but for the enterprise. So what two people can do with you know, pizza, and innovate, how do we bring that to a larger concept? That's what the garage is really about. All right, and Tim, what, talk about your role. Yeah, uh, I lead the data analytics field team, and so we're really focused on helping companies do digital transformation and really drive digital and analytics and data into their businesses to get better business value, accelerate time to value. Awesome, so we're going to get into it. You guys both have written books. We're going to get into the field guide. We're going to get into the cloud adoption playbook. But Peter, I want you to jump in here because I know you got to run, so get your questions in and then I'll take over. Sure, so uh, I think obvious, obvious question number one is, one of the biggest challenges that we've had in analytics over the past couple of years is we had to get really good at the infrastructure and really good at the software and really good at this and really good at that. And there were a lot of pilot failures because if you succeeded at one, you might not have succeeded at the other. The garage sounds like it's time to value based. Yes. Is that the right way to think about this? And what are you guys together doing to drive time to value, facilitate adoption, and get to the changes, that the, the outcomes that the business really wants? So Tim, you want to start? Yeah, I can, I can start, because uh, you know, Mo, Mo leads the overall garage, and within the garage, we have something we call the data first methodology, where we're really driving a direct engagement with clients, where we help them develop a data strategy. Because most clients, when they do digital transformation or really go after data, they're taking kind of a, a legacy approach. They're building these big monolithic data warehouses, they're doing big master data management programs, and what we're really trying to do is change the paradigm. And so we connect with the data first methodology through the garage to get to a data strategy that's connected to the business outcome. Because it's what, what data and analytics do you need to successfully achieve what you're trying to do as a business. A lot of this is digital transformation, which means you're not only changing what you're doing to, from, like from a, a data warehouse to a data lake, but you're also accelerating the data because now we have to get into the time domain of a, of a customer, or your customer, where they may be consuming things uh, digitally. And so they're at a website, they're moving into a bank branch, they go into a social media site, maybe they're being contacted by a FinTech. You've got to retain a and maintain a digital relationship, and that's the key. And the garage itself is really playing on the same core value of it's not the big beating the small anymore, it's the fast beating the slow. And so when you think about the fast beating the slow, how do you achieve fast? You really do that by three ways. So the garage says, first way to achieve fast is break down the problem into smaller chunks, also known as MVPs or minimum viable products. So you take a very complex problem that people are talking and over talking and over engineering, and you really bring it down to something that has a client value, user centered. So bring the discipline from the business side, the operations side, the developers, and we mush them together to center that. That's one way to do fast. The second way- But by the way, uh, I did uh, work with a client. They started calling them minimum viable outcomes. Yes, minimum viable outcomes, minimum viable product, and there's a lot of these types of minimum viable to achieve. And you're, we're talking about four weeks, six weeks, and so on and so forth. The story of American Airlines was taking all of their kiosk systems, for example, and really changing them uh, both in terms of the type of services they can deliver, so now you can recheck your flights, et cetera, within six week periods. Uh, and you're really, that's fast. And doing it in one terminal and then moving to others. The second way you do fast is by understanding that the change is not just technology. The change is culture, process, and so on. So when you come to the garage, it's not like the mechanic style garage where you are sitting in the waiting room and the mechanic is fixing your car. Not at all. You really have some sort of mechanical skills and you're in there with me. That's called pair programming. That's called test driven. These types of techniques and methodologies are proven in the industry. So Tim will sit right next to me and we'll code together. By the time Tim goes back to his company, 
He's now an expert on how to do it. So FAST is achieving the cultural transformation as well as this minimum viable Hands aspect. on, and you guys are actually learning from each other in that experience. And absolutely. Oh, yeah. And that sharing, yeah. So I would also say, I would think that there's one more thing but for both of you guys, and that is increasingly as business acknowledges that data is an asset, unlike traditional systems approaches where we built a siloed application, this, this server, that database manager, this data model, that application, and then we do some integration at some point in time. When you start with this garage approach, data-centric approach, figure out how that works, now you have an asset that can be reused in a lot of new and interesting ways. Does that also factor into this from a speed standpoint? Yeah, it does, and, th and this is a key part. We, we have something we call data science experience now, mm -hmm. and we're really driving pilots through the garage, through the data first method, to get a rapid engagement. And the goal is to do sprints, to do you know, 12 to 20 week kind of sprints where we actually produce a business outcome that you show to the business, and then you put it into production. And we're actually developing you know, algorithms and other things as we go that are part of the analytic result. And that's kind of the key. And behind that, you know, that the analytic result is really the, you know, kind of the icing on the cake and you know, the business value where you connect. But there's a whole foundation underneath that of data, and that's why we do a data topology. And the data topology is kind of replaced the data lake, replaces all that modeling, because now we can have a data topology that spans on-premise, private cloud, and public cloud and we can drive an integrated strategy with a governance program over that to actually support the data analytics that you're trying to drive. And that's how we get at that. But that topology's got to tie back to the attributes of the data, right? Not the infrastructure it, it, that's associated with the data. It does, and the, the idea of the topology is you may have an existing warehouse, that becomes a zone in the topology. Yes. So we aren't really ripping and replacing, we're augmenting. You know, you know, so we may augment an on-premise warehouse that may sit in a relational database technology with a Hadoop environment that we can spin up in the cloud very rapidly, and then data science applications, and so we can have a discovery zone as well as the traditional structured reporting. And the level of data quality can be mixed. You may do you know, analytic discovery against raw data versus where you have highly processed data where we have extreme data quality for you know, regulatory reporting. Compared to a God box where everything goes through some pipe into and the black box. And you put it out later. Yes. Well, yeah. well and this, and this is the, you know, you know, what Hadoop came out, right? People thought they were going to dump all their data to Hadoop and something beautiful was going to happen, right? And what <laughs> happened is everybody created a lot of data swamps Something really ugly happened. Right, right, it's just a pile oh, of data. Oh, they ended up with a cheaper data warehouse. It, 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 but it's not, because the data warehouse was structured. Yeah, it has, you know, data quality all the data mo the modeling, but all that stuff took massive amounts of time. When you just dump it into a, a Hadoop environment, you have no structure. You have to discover the structures. So we're really doing all the things we used to do with data warehousing, only we're doing it in an incremental, agile, faster method where you can also right. give access to the data all the way through it. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, it's not like we will serve no wine before it's time. You know, now you can yeah, 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 you yeah, can yeah, drink sure. the, eat the grapes, you can drink the wine because yeah. it's fermenting and you no can No scheme on right, just right. throw it in. There, it there is an image that um, Tim shows that the idea of a data lake is this organized library with books, but reality is a library with all the books dumped in the right. middle. Go find the books <laughs> yeah, that you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. And no do decimal. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to pick on the idea that you had earlier, when you look at that type of a solution, the squad structure is changing, right? To solve that particular problem, you no longer just have your data people on one side. You have a data person, you have the business person that's trying to distill it, you have the developer, you have the operator. So the concept of DevOps to try and synchronize between these two players is now really evolved. And this is the first time you're hearing it right at the cube. It's the biz data DevOps. That's the new way we actually start to tell Explain this. That. Explain that. Very simple. It starts with business requirements. So the business uh, reflects the user and the consumer. And they come with not just generic, you know, generic thumb, they come with very specific requirements. That then automatically and immediately says, what are the most valuable data sources I need, either from my enterprise or externally? Because the minute I understand those requirements and the persistence of those requirements, I'm now shaping the way the solution has to be implemented. Data first, not data as an afterthought. Exactly. That's why we call it the data first method. The yeah. developers then, when they're building the cloud infrastructure, they're really understanding the type of resilience, the type of compliance, the type of meshing that you need to do, and they're doing it from the outset. And because of the fact that they're dealing with data, the operation people 
automatically understand that they have to deal with the right to recovery and so on and so forth. So now we're having Makes this. Makes sense. You're not throwing it over the wall. Exactly. That's where the and, DevOps and piece comes in. you're also understanding the velocity of data, right? Through the enterprise as well as the gaps that you have as an enterprise because you're, when you go into a digital world, you have to accumulate a lot more data and then you have to be able to match that. You have to be able to do identity resolution to get to a customer. You know, understand all the dimensions of it. Well, in the digital world, data is you're at the core. So, and it's interesting what you were saying, Mo, uh, uh, about essentially the line of business identifying the data sources because they're the ones who know how data affects monetization. Yes. Inder Paul Bhandari, when he took over as IBM chief data officer, said, yes. You must form partnerships with the line of business in order to understand yes. how to monetize, how data contributes to the monetization. Yes. And your, your DevOps metaphor is very important because everybody's sort of on the same page is That's the right. idea, right? And, and there's a transformation here because we're working very close with Interpol's team and the emergence of a chief data officer in a many enterprises and we actually, we kind of had a program that we still have going from last year which is kind of the, the chief data officer success program, right? Where you can help get at this because the classic IT structure has kind of started to fail because it's not data oriented, it's technology oriented. So by getting to a data-oriented organization and having an elevated chief data officer, you can get aligned with the line of business, really get your hands on the data, and we prescribe the data topology, which is actually the back cover of that book, shows an example of one, because that's the new center of the universe. The technologies can change, this data can live on-premise or in the cloud, but the topology should only change when your business changes. Your this business is hugely there. important, so I want to pick up on something Ginny Rometty was talking about yesterday, was incumbent disruptors. And when I heard that, I'm like, yes. come on, no way. Yeah. You know, you know, instant skeptic. And so then I started to think to about it, it. And, and you guys, what you're describing is how you take somebody, a company, who's been organized around human expertise and, and other physical assets yes. for years, decades, yes. maybe hundreds of years, right. and transform them into a data-oriented company exactly. where data is the core asset and human expertise yes. is surrounding that data and learn how to look. It's not in, you know, there, most data is in silos. Yes. You're yes. busting down those silos exactly. and giving a pres prescription to exactly. do that. Well, that's right? a, I think exactly. what Tim actually said is very, you heard us use the word we, prescriptive, you heard us the, use the word methodology, mm -hmm. data first method or the garage method. And what we're really starting to see is these patterns from enterprises. You know, what works for a startup does not necessarily translate easily for an enterprise. You have to make it work in the context of the existing baggage, the existing processes, the existing culture. Customer expectations. Expectations, yeah. the scale, all of those have dimensions. So this particular notion of a prescription is we're taking the experiences from Hertz, Marriott, American Airlines, RBC, you know, all of these clients that really have made that leap and got the value, and essentially started to put it in a simple framework. Seven elements to those frameworks, and we're that's in the this, adoption, right? yeah. So you got two, we got two documents here, the Cloud Adoption Playbook, which Mo, you authored, a little co-authored. With Tim's help. Yeah. Tim as well, and then this field guide, the IBM Data and Analytics Strategy Field Guide, right. that Tim, you also contributed yes. to this. Which right? augments the book. Okay, well, so I'll, I'll give look. you the description yep. of the two. I love the hybrid cloud data topology That's an back. example of a topology on yeah, the back. So that's um, kind of cool. But go thing. ahead, let's talk about these. So if you look at the cover of that book, and piece of art, very well this grown, is, that's yeah. right, you will see that there are seven elements. You start to see architecture, you start to see culture and organization, you start to see methodology, you start to see all of these different components. Governance, management, security. That's right, that really tech. are important in any type of transformation. Right. And then when you look at the data piece, that's a way of look, taking that data and applying all of these dimensions. So when a client comes forward and says, look, I'm having a data challenge in the sense of how do I transform access, how do I share data, how do I monetize, we start to take them through all of these dimensions. And what we've been able to do is to go back to our starting comment, yeah. accelerate the transformation. And, and, the, and, 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 the, and the, re, the real engagement that we're getting pulled into now in many cases and getting kind of pulled right up the executive chains at these companies is data strategy. You know, because this is kind of the core. You know, you've got a, so many companies have a business strategy, very good business strategies, but then you ask for their data strategy. They show you some kind of block diagram architecture. <laughs> or they show you a bunch of servers in the data center. You know, and that's not a strategy, right? The, the data strategy really gets at the sources and consumption velocity of data and gaps in the data that you need to achieve your business outcome. And so by developing a data strategy, this opens up the patterns and the things that we talk to. So now we look at data security, we look at 
data management, we, we look at governance, we look at all the aspects of it to right. actually lay this out. And, and, an, and another thought here, the other transformation is, you know, in data warehousing, we've been doing this for the past, you know, some of us longer than others, 20 or 30 years, right? And our whole thing then was, we're going to align the silos by dumping all the data into this big data warehouse. That, that is really not the path to go because these things became like giant dinosaurs. You know, big, monolithic, difficult to change. You know, the, the data lake concept is you leave the data where it is and you establish a governance and management process over top of it and then you augment it with things like cloud, like Hadoop, like other things where we can rapidly spin up and we're taking advantage of things like object stores and advanced infrastructures and this is really where Mo and I connect with our IBM Cloud Private Platforms with our data you know, capabilities because we can now put together managed solutions for some of these major enterprises and even and show them the roadmap. And that's that really that roadmap. It's critical in that transformation. Last word. Yeah, so to me, I think the exciting thing about this year versus when we spoke last year is the maturity curve. You know, you asked me this last year, you said, Mo, where are we on the maturity curve of adoption? And I think the fact that we're talking today about data strategies and so on is a reflection of yeah, how agree. people have matured. Earlier on, they really start to think about experiment with ideas. We're now starting to see them access detailed, deep information about approaches and methodologies to do it. And the key word for us this year was not about experimentation or trial, it's about acceleration. Because exactly. they've proven it in that garage fashion in small places. Now I want to do it at the American Airlines scale. I want to do it at the global scale. Exactly. And I want to, so acceleration is the key theme of what we're trying to What a it. change from 15, 20 years ago when the, the data warehouse was the exactly. single version of the truth, it was like a snake swallowing a basketball. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you had a handful a of people analogy. who actually yeah. knew how to get in there, right. and you had this huge asynchronous process to get insights out. Now you guys, very important, in, in it's the year, you've made a ton of, of data. progress. Everyone yeah. should be, yeah. So, guys, yeah. th really yeah. exciting. I love the enthusiasm, congratulations. <laughs> a lot a lot of more work to do, a lot more yeah. companies to, to affect, so yeah. we'll be watching. Thank you. Thank for you coming. so right. much. Thank you very and much. Make sure you read our book. Yeah, definitely <laughs> read these books. Cl the Cloud Adoption <laughs> Playbook <laughs> and uh, IBM Data and Analytics Strategy Field Guide. Where can you get these? I presume on your Amazon. website. You can get the. Oh, you get them on Amazon? Great. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys, appreciate it. Keep it right there, everybody. This is theCUBE. We're live from IBM Think 2018, and we'll be right back.